Blessed morning. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I'm gonna pull a reading. I just was ripped out of bed by fear, by panic, by this incredible wave of anxiety. I have not done anything. I, I went to the bathroom and I sat down because I knew immediately that I wanted to pull a reading on this. The fear in the masculine energy is so strong. This is not just, this is not just me. <laughs> this is not just me. I, I, and sometimes I forget that it's not just me. <laughs> but there's just this pulse of primal, animalistic urge to flee, to run. The urge to run is incredibly strong. The masculine energy is doubtful. It has a desire that is so powerful that to contradict this desire, which the patterns of its conditioning do naturally, it, it finds all kinds of ways to second guess it, to doubt it, to contradict it, say it's not gonna work, say it's not real, say it's whatever. And the desire is so strong that the doubt has to be really strong to match it. The doubt of this conditioned identity. It's all fear. It's all fear based. It's not guidance. The masculine is starting to realize this, is realizing this. And they're feeling the fear intensely and fighting the urge to run fighting the urge to succumb to it. I, I don't know how to express it better than that. It's, I just got the image of seven of wands, five of wands, five of swords. There's conflict, there's the recognition that this is the self-sabotaging behavior. In essence, this is, this is shadow, devil energy, whatever, illusion coming in to sabotage the actual desire to lie to try to cover up the guidance and convince us of something else it's incredibly overwhelming that's the sensation I mean that's what it uses it just floods the body with I would say cortisol and adrenaline it's just a flood of fear, actual panic stricken, uh, seven of cups, four of pentacles, three of swords. Those are just the energies that I'm seeing and feeling. And I, it's highly likely with the number of cards that I pull, of course, that those are going to come out, but also there's no reason specifically that they should come out. There are 72 cards in the tarot. Um, it's perfectly logical to imagine that none of them would appear, but I expect more than one of those. <sighs> Holy shit. I, I woke up with it so strong that I said out loud before I was even really conscious. It just came out of me. I, whoa, anxiety. <laughs> Whoa, anxiety. I, I just about sat up in bed feeling this wave rip through me. And uh, yeah, it's very real. This is the scariest thing that masculine energy has ever faced. Can I just put it that way? It is challenging everything inside of their conditioning, inside of the masculine conditioning within and without, I mean, take that how it resonates, but it's, it's, and it's true for society as well. This is, oh my God. The bigger this desire, the more that they believe it, the more the conditioning rises up to try to stop it because it, it knows the, the entity essentially is what it is that has existed this collection of thought form this thought form egoic identity 
whatever you want to call it, knows that with the challenging of these thoughts and this doubt, that it goes away. It no longer has control. It cannot continue to survive. And it is fighting tooth and nail to survive. The masculine energy is fighting just as hard, trying, understanding that resistance is, is not exactly the answer, that there's a difference between resistance and standing your ground. So it's feeling the fear and it is trying so hard to find that balanced place that's not pushing against and not being pushed by. That is just standing and essentially letting the panic wash over. Letting it happen. And saying, I am going to do it anyway because I trust my desire even when all of this shit is blocking everything out. I know what I know even when I'm in a space of not knowing it. I couldn't have known it ever. I couldn't have known it for even a single second if it weren't true if it weren't real so even in this place where everything appears to be the opposite where everything in the brain is is what it looks like is screaming against it in some form or fashion i know it's not true i know that's not me that's not my belief that's not my desire all of this is some made up other thing that is trying to survive by convincing me that those are my thoughts and my feelings. There's not even feeling there, it's just fear. That's the thing. There is no feeling there. And that's, that's a way that I know too, is there's no other sensation but panic. There is no, this is not a following of desire, right? The soul speaks through emotion and it's, its language is love and desire. I mean, that's, that's the topic that it's always speaking on. This, is, this has nothing to do with that. This is just fucking fear. Through and through. <laughs> there is no want this. This is not following a good feeling. This is all uncomfortable emotion. Not even emotion. I Sensation. I don't know what else to call it. I'm using the Rider weight because what I saw in my mind when I saw those cards was, was from the Rider weight. Mostly that guy on the Seven of Wands. It is so many meanings so many of the energies wrapped around that card of feeling like it's coming at you from all angles there was overwhelm in that and that urge to to wall up to be defensive to really actually to hide to hide away but also the standing up for the i don't no <laughs> i'm not doing that i'm not doing this I feel a desire. It's so strong. And I know that's why the retaliation against it is so strong. Because it's challenging everything in me that had been conditioned from the past. It's challenging everything. All of them. All of the shadow. All of the egoic identities. All of them are, are rising up against this. Determination. The term, it is fast. It's, it's great speed. It is the feeling of, oh my god, this is so fast. <laughs> and so again, this, this balanced recognition of, I set this speed. And I set it because I wanted it. I wouldn't have set this speed if I didn't want it. And now I'm here, and oh my god. 
<laughs> it, it's just like a sudden recognition. What is it when I just was remembering uh, Ricky Bobby. Talladega Nights. There we go. He likes to go fast. And then, you know, something happens. And he becomes afraid of going fast. And the rest of the movie is, is about trusting himself enough to get back to that place of doing exactly what he likes to do, which is go fast, which is feel the speed, feel the wind in your hair. But when you're not trusting yourself, it feels scary. When you are, it feels amazing. It's everything you want. You're like, yeah, amp it up, juice it up, <laughs> speed it up, pedal to the metal. It's, it's only when the doubt seizes that it starts to feel uncomfortable or any other type of way and all of that is ego but we're on this ride because we want to be we're on it for a reason <laughs> a good reason a good feeling reason strength that's the other card it implies fear that's that is the only other card that that came to mind when i was talking about fear and this struggle that it is taking incredible strength which again is this is not it's not a forceful strength it's a calm quiet as calm as it can be it, it's a still strength it's a strength in stillness it's a strength in non-reaction in non-motion in just standing there and feeling the terror and not moving i almost used the guardians for this and Maybe I'll use them to clarify. I don't know. We'll see. Because that's the one card that I was seeing strength from that deck. Was the mouse facing the snake. Is what it is in that one. And it is that that sense of... Mind is, is so crazy that it can create this sort of sense of impending doom. Impending death. That's what it is perceiving, is death to not just one identity, but all of them. So it's like a total destruction of self. And it interprets that, that pushback from ego as, you know, we're falling off a cliff type of thing. We're... <laughs> Except we wanted and we want we want this. We want this. Everything inside, too, is, is screaming, keep going. Keep going. I am reminded very much of last year when what I experienced as Kundalini Awakening happened. And I only use that word because it matched all of the symptoms. I had no idea what it was. I looked it up. I googled my symptoms after the fact. And that's what came up. And my understanding, too, is that it's actually becoming extremely common. What used to be very rare, spontaneous kundalini rising, <laughs> is becoming very common. And it is jarring. And there's a lot of panic there. It's, and it feels like death, like you're dying. But something in you also is saying, just keep going. Just keep going. underneath that yeah it's taking a lot of bravery i mean these are my these are the bravest cards and this is also an urge to run away <laughs> it's a bit of both it's it's taking so much not to do what we've always done <laughs> because that was never us again it was just the part of this pattern. It's, it, it is that same, the perspective shift when we're aligned with ourself and our energy and the truth of what we know and feel. All of this feels incredible. When we get just a touch to the side, when we just stop looking at the, at the road for a moment, <laughs> Suddenly, it, it's all of this fear, all of this, I do get guilt and shame 
there's guilt and shame around that too around feeling fear even there is shame around feeling fear which is this conditioned impulse not even of the soul of the mind and there's that five of swords book ending all of this yeah we're so aware that this is a pattern and that it's it's a, a defensive pattern to to shell up when things get good when they get going the direction that we want the way that we want the speed that we want all of those things then there is this trigger that generates incredible fear and i just yeah there's the fear under all of it coming up and there's the five of wands <laughs> underneath the queen of wands this intense internal conflict empress on top it, it all of it centered around the feminine i mean that's what this is about the closer we get to that which is desired the more the self-sabotage conditioned programming which has its own identity <laughs> wrapped around it is its own entity the more that pushes back Okay, so what, High Priestess, yeah, and I, I didn't get anywhere else. This jumped out. It's a couple things, I mean, it's everything, it's very mysterious. It is, I mean, a bunch of stuff coming up, yes, but it, it's, we're really learning how to trust our intuition even when we're not in touch with it, to trust what it said, even when the fear is blocking it out. And I am drawn to the, I mean, the very esoteric meaning and the depiction of this card is Boaz and Yakin which are the feminine and the masculine energies, the two pillars, and in the center is the portal to man's wisdom, man made wise. When the energies are balanced, when we have access to our total self and our total knowledge, that's how intuition, the, the mysteries are revealed to us. And it takes incredible trust, faith, determination to stay the course, staying the course, trusting the course, even when it feels like we, we've lost the reins and we're just being run away with. Trusting that, again, it's about we were never in control. <laughs> Give up control. Let the soul lead. That's the feminine energy. Let it lead. Let it take you. Let it sweep you. It is terrifying to the mind, to the masculine, not to have the death grip <laughs> on the reins. But again, it wants, it wants this, and it knows it does. It wants to trust this completely, the speed, the direction, all of it. And that means surrendering. There's, there's a surrendering to the process here, to the how, the timetable, all of it. Yeah, trusting the soul, exactly that. Wanting the soul to lead and understanding that means letting go. <laughs> 
Letting go. Letting go of the reins. Letting go of control. Yeah, this, this journey, the soul knows where it's going. It knows where it's going. It's leading us where we want to go. We're learning to trust that even when we don't feel like we trust it. Does that make sense? To trust it even when we're doubting. To say, I'm just going with it anyway. Because this, this doubt, this fear is not a part of my guidance system. This doesn't mean anything, actually. It's not even me feeling this. It is this other entity that I share space with that is essentially possessing me, trying to possess me. And what I want to be possessed by is myself. I want to be self-possessed. Led by, that's what it means. When you're, you're literally possessed by your soul. The form is possessed by the soul. <laughs> the whole of it. Okay. So let's talk about it then. Let's pull a reading. Ah, the Ace of Swords. Oh, man. There's lots. It's just, it's just a lot of energy in general. <laughs> okay, that's it. The Lovers. It's all based around these connections coming together which is for the purpose of incredible healing. Yeah, the chariot, this is, this is the direction. This is the course. This is what we're determined not, I wanna say not to fuck this up, but I mean, that's there. That, that is the most succinct way I can put it. Determined not to fuck this up by following the condition. Yeah. The conditioned fear response of the past by listening to ego. We don't, we're not listening to ego. We're listening to something deeper. That's what we want. Something deeper. All of the emotion that's underneath the fear. Even when we can't see it because the fear is so strong, we're trusting, we're knowing, we're believing, having faith that that is there. That's, that's there. All of this other stuff. That layers itself on top and then says, oh no, it's gone. Where did it go? To try to generate more fear. To, to add to itself, to feed itself, to get you to align with it, and then just feel more afraid. <laughs> it's, it's so fucky and backwards that it tries to convince you the answer to escaping the fear is in generating more of it. <laughs> because when you align with it, when you start believing and following those thoughts, you're generating more fear. It's, it's feeding itself in that way. That's the vibration that it's consuming. So the only way around it is to just sit in it, is to just see it as much as you can while it's happening and say, I know that's not true. I know that's not true. I know what's happening here. You're trying to elicit a response from me. And I'm not going there. I know that just because I lose sight of something, that doesn't mean it's gone. I know what's real because I have known it. And I know I'll know it clearly again. Because that too is a desire that is being added to and clarified in this moment. 
in a feeling of doubt, I just want more powerfully to know with clarity. I want, I want faith. I want to know my faith. I want to stand in that place. You're adding to that desire right now. <laughs> and what I desire is the truth, is what is, is what is given. So I know that I only know more clearly what I have already known. <laughs> Page of Wands. We are exploring this in a way that we have not before. Really trying to look at this differently. With, with curiosity. I mean, it is a curious thing to see the way that this happens inside. And we want it to work. We, we, I, that energy, that earnest of just, I, I want this. So whatever it takes in me, whatever I gotta do in me to stand in my place of knowing and power and pleasure, delight, I'm gonna do it because I want it. I am, I'm determined. Whatever is asked of me, whatever I can, which is just lining up with it, right? It is just lining up again with my own energy. I'm gonna find a way to do that. I am going to find a way within myself. This is this is where where there's a will there's a way comes in. This is where will power comes in. It's not about resistance. It's not about efforting. It's about it's a type of perseverance. It is persevering in the trusting in feeling this again and again and again and saying, I'm not giving up. I will not be moved. I will not be threatened. <laughs> into submission. I will not be beat down by this, by my own fear. I'm not gonna let this stop me because I want it. <laughs> so I will find a way. This works because I want it to. I believe that. Knight of Pentacles, it's, it is again that steadfast. We're just gonna stand here. It's a little bit of, uh, it's multiple things. It's a feeling of frozenness, yes. <clears throat> a feeling of everything whipping around us. And the water flowing very quickly. The energy is moving very quickly right now. But we're realizing that we don't, we don't have to panic over the speed of the flow. When we surrender to it, when we become still in the flow, when we're not thrashing around, trying to control exactly where we're going, when we can just relax into it and stay still, there's a peace there, there's a calm there. We can find that place of centeredness and groundedness. Peace with non-peace. There's other things attached to this too, but I I predominantly do get, again, this reliable, we know we get there. We know that there is a way around this resistance. We know we want to trust this. We want to trust this. We know we're right to want to trust it. So we're just going to stand here and let it rip through us. 
We're going to let it happen. We're going to let everything happen. What's in the soul? Yeah. Nine of Pentacles. I mean, it's... The soul is thriving. <laughs> the soul is, is thriving in this, is loving this, and that is the energy that's getting through. That's why, because it flows from 5D to 3D, that's why we want this to work. That's why we're seeing this the self-sabotagingness of the urge to flee, and we don't want that. We can feel how delighted the soul is even when all of that fear is layered on top, even when it's not such a clear sensation, there's just this, oh, but I want to be here. I want this. I can feel, even if I'm not in touch with the part of myself that is flowing and blowing and having a great time, I know it is. I know that's me. That is me. The rest of this stuff is not me. Yeah. Balance. Bre I want to just say breath. I don't know. No longer trying to make sense of anything. Stop trying to make sense of it and just accept it as what is. Just go with it. <laughs> We are receiving this massive infusion. I did just get almost not quite a wave of calm. My muscles feel very heavy. I can still feel anxiety in here. The heart is being opened. And the wider it's opened, The, the more exposed and vulnerable we feel. The more energy is flowing through the heart, the scarier it feels to the mind and to those entities there that cannot survive on this type of energy. They cannot feed and they can't sustain in this environment of incredibly high vibrational energy that's coming through the heart with great speed and intensity. So again, they're, they're doing everything they can to try to slow it down, to try to dampen it, to try to cloud it, but it's too much. It's too strong and it's not stopping <laughs> because it's the truth of what is. There is that four of pentacles. We want to let go. Obviously, it's a, it is a holding on. We're holding on here, actually, to something different. We're learning to let go of what things look like, which includes in the mind, and hold on to the feeling, even if it's just sort of the imprint of it is the way that I'm getting it. To know. It's that sense of there was something there. And now it just feels like I can see the imprint of it, but I see the imprint of it, so I know it's there. It's, it's only the fear, it's this illusion that covers it up and makes it look like it's gone. And then says, it was never there. It was never there. You're just crazy, you just imagined it. It was never there. But I can see the outline. <laughs> I can see the indentation of where that feeling sat in, in the perception, because again, the fear is covering it up to make it look like it's not there. And I know that means that it is, that it was and it is. So I'm holding on to that. 
I'm letting go of the belief in what it looks like, the belief in appearance, the belief in external, the reliance upon my physical senses, even, how do I put this? That even in the internal version, I know my internal senses are being obscured. And that's why it feels like there's nothing there. But it's, again, it's that blindfold. It's that pressure on the nerve. It's that I know there's something there. I, it's just there's, there's this fear in the way. But just because there's something in the way doesn't mean I can't see it. Doesn't mean I'm blind. I can sense more deeply. We're learning a deeper sense of knowing and faith through the fear. And we're holding on to that. We're trusting that. And holding on to that means letting go of the rest of it. Holding on to faith means letting go of fear. Letting go within the fear, essentially. But it's it's the same kind of thing. Okay. But I do kind of want to clarify with the guardians. Which is highly unusual. And we're going to go with it. Because... That's how this works. That is the whole message anyway. Oh yeah, nine of swords. Anxiety, of course, should have. That one, that one I didn't see, but it's right there. Absolutely, anxiety. There's the three of swords under the king of swords. Hanged man. We're learning a new way to act on pain, which is not acting. <sighs> because this is, again, this is, there's no actual pain here. There is the specter of past pain that is being projected into the potential of future pain. And then because of that projection, it's experienced as present anxiety, which again, the guidance that is not a part of our guidance system. The, the mind, the mind will say that anxiety is pain and that something is wrong and that you need to fix it. None of that is true. None of that is true. It's really a resistance to the sensation itself that creates the conflict and the feeling of suffering. And when we can just sit and look at it. See how this is, this is a pattern. This is a pattern. This is something that was established a long, long time ago. We are, we're facing collective, generational, ancestral wounds happening as well as what we've incurred within this lifetime it's a lot it's a big fucking buildup of of shit of pain and fear it is generations of pain that we are now releasing by believing in something else by believing that this doesn't have, we don't have to continue this narrative. This has been a narrative. This has been a story. We don't have to continue it. Past pain does not dictate anything about future or present experience. The specter, the specter of pain is what creates the anxiety here. But we're learning just to sit in it. And there's there's the emperor. 
under the Hierophant. That's the true control. This is the true controlled energy of masculine. Is in standing still within the turmoil and the chaos. Oh. God, I want to cry so much. Like, I want, I have such a desire to cry because when this, when this hits, when the anxiety is like this, it happened really powerfully last night. And I knew, I knew there was, there was going to be more. When it hits, it cuts the emotion off. It's a feeling of being cut off from the feminine energy. Which is the soul, which is the self. And it's also everything that the masculine wants. And in that feeling of being cut off from it, there's a lot of pain and panic. Again, that sensation of where did it go? It was, it was right here, it was right here. Everything that I want and have wanted right here. And it's like, I can't see it. That panic of I can't feel, I can't feel, which is a thought, which is covering up all of the feeling. <laughs> because when you are absorbed in the thought space, you can't feel. It's all, it's all up here. And again, it, it tricks you, it tells you that it, like you gotta think your way out of thinking. You can't think your way out of thinking. You can't think your way into feeling. This is a struggle for masculine energy, but it wants, it wants to understand. It is so committed to this. Just wanted to look a little bit more deeply. It was just the high priestess under the emperor. Again, yeah. For masculine energy to trust intuition to come into balance with feminine, I would I would say it's a lot more challenging than for feminine to raise masculine and come into balance within herself. The feminine energy is at an advantage in this because it, it's intuitive to her because it's all intuition. It's just, I get it. I, I feel it. I get it. There are certain things that feel very scary and definitely a lack of confidence and, and self-worth and valuing of self is there. But it's, it's a different journey. the journey of the masculine. See, the feminine is, is familiar with the dark and the shadow. And it's, it's really letting in the light there in, and trusting the light. That is more of a challenge for her. For the masculine, it is a journey into darkness. <laughs> It's, it's having lived only in this place of high visibility, just putting it that way, where everything is clear to the mind, the vision is clear because it's kind of always been outward focused and learning to go within and to have these shadows loom up so large that the light becomes obscured. And then to trust that just because the light is obscured, it's not gone. And it sounds so simple. But the fear is very real. The fear is 
I mean, fear is, is a fucking illusion, but it feels very real. The experience of it is very real. It's visceral. Just, we're just gonna keep going here. We're just gonna keep going here. That that is the sense of just just keep going. I always struggle to shuffle these cards. The Eight of Wands. It fell out upside down. I don't feel it. I mean, taking that to the side, actually. That just feels like the speed, in general, of... Well, it does go with the page of wands, okay. It's just, it's in motion. It is set in motion. And we're... We're trusting it. We want to trust it, even when the trust is covered up. Page of Pentacles. Yeah, nervous. Feeling very small. I mean, so small. And afraid and feeling like all I have to offer is this. I know I am this nervous, small, shaking thing. But I am devoted to this. I am devoted to this path. To this journey. To going through with this. To walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Because I want this so much. Because I will die a thousand deaths for this. And I will feel the full impact of that of what it feels like to die a thousand times. All of the fear, all of the pain. That I will do that. Because I want this. Because this is my quest. It is my quest because I have chosen it. I have chosen it out of my desire. That's why I'm committed to it. That's why I'm devoted. There's nothing else. There's nothing forcing me. Everything, all of this other stuff is saying give up. Give up the quest. But I don't want to. I want this. And so even in my fear, in my terror, I can promise you this, that I will never stop walking. I will never stop moving towards you, feminine. Within and without. Because that's where I want to be. That is my desire. What fell out? The world. I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge cycle shift. It is a new journey, but I also get the, the very, I mean, maybe it's cliche, but this is everything. This means the world to me. I do get that. And, and a revering of the feminine energy too here, just especially with the bees on this card. Queen bee. The influence of the feminine is all encompassing. It's it that is the guiding light. I'm also drawn to the fireflies, which I've never really noticed. And what looked like kind of pollen to me, I mean the little the sparkly bits. It's even even when I lose sight of you, your influence is so strong and that is my that is my guide and that's true again within and without feminine energy being the soul even when we lose sight of the soul we feel the influence of it it's that imprint 
It's the evidence of its existence. It's, I know it's there. I can see the footprints in the sand. I can see it moving. And I'm going to follow that. So I never actually do lose sight of it. Even if it shifts, it changes. It seems like it's obscured because it's, it's obscured by this shadow, by this fear, by this cloud. Even then, I keep walking. I am going to keep walking. Through the pain. Because we, we also, we got to go into the pain. We got to go into the hurt that is, is. The fear of which and the past experience of which is generating the fear. Yeah, that's a powerful three of swords. I mean, we're being guided to healing, but it's healing through the feeling, through the experience of this pain. And that means feeling the fear. <sighs> letting it, letting it sweep through. All right, tell me about the Knight of Pentacles here. Yeah, we're following the dream, Ten of Cups. We're following the dream. The pain is so great because the masculine energy has all of this conditioning to doubt the dream. The dream is received by the soul, by the feminine, by feeling. It's the condition of unbalanced masculine, of, of overly dominant masculine, to, to doubt it, essentially, to not trust itself, not trust the feeling, not trust the desire, not trust the day daydream. <laughs> but we're learning, again, to hold on to this to hold on to the dream. To know that we dreamed it for a reason. <laughs> we dreamed it because it's real. Four of Wands. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a devotion to this, it's a commitment to this path. Again, just the way that I feel it. A commitment to this path. It's a commitment to the feminine energy. It's the card of marriage. It's also the path to the Ten of Pentacles, which is the realization of the dream which is everything. Again, it, it is that sort of repeating message of this means everything. This is everything. I am committed to, devoted to this path. There's that strength card. And I do feel it as a passionate devotion, even through fear, through the facing of fear. That is, that is a demonstration of masculine's devotion for feminine. I will face, I will stare death in the face. I will face my greatest terror for you, for this, because I want this. Again, speaking to feminine within as the soul, speaking to feminine without. And 
that heart. I just... My heart is saying... Don't listen to the fear. Don't let it move you. Don't be moved by the fear. Stand there. In it. Again, that this is what we're doing, this Knight of Pentacles, this still energy that is just, it's just, I'm just here. I have, I feel like I have nothing else to offer, but I offer this, my devotion. Again, I, I'll, I'll die for this. If this means I die, then I will face that willingly because it's my desire yeah <laughs> there's there's the emperor under the ten of cups just just reinforcing that this is in fact the masculine energy Speaking to feminine, again, within and without. And it, the journey is within. I mean, that's the devotion to without, is by the devotion to within, the devotion to the self, the soul, the feminine energy within us, devotion to uniting with it, to listening to it. To finding it again and again, even when we feel like we've lost it, even when we feel like we've lost that connection. Trusting we're going to feel it again, we're going to find it again. And the more that we lose it, the more that we want to find it, the more that we want to keep it, the more constant we want that contact to be. And that becomes the progression, that's what we're moving towards, that is the journey, that's the goal, the quest is constant contact with the soul, constant contact with the feminine, union of masculine and feminine. The marriage, the, the merger, where then we don't separate again. And again, separation is just an illusion. It's, it, it's the perception of it. Generated by the shadow, the conditioning. We're learning to follow the light in a new way. Again, if we can't see the light, we're following the glow of it. We're following the glow. We're seeing that the landscape is being lit. And maybe it's just for a moment. Maybe it's just for a flash. Maybe it's just a couple inches in front of us. But that's all we need. That's all we need to move through darkness is to feel where that glow is emanating from and just step there it's one step at a time yeah oh you're right buddy bonk your head on my elbow then it, yeah <laughs> following the dream even if it's just the imprint of the dream. I mean, following the passion, certainly. And that's that's what's leaving the imprint <laughs> as well. It's almost even like a scorched area. Like, this burning that was here, and I know it was here, and I know it still is here. There's evidence of it. It is wild how the mind will cover things up and then tell you that they never were. That you made it all up, that it was all in your head. That is what... That is what powerful egoic identity shadow is capable of. It, 
it's all trickery. It's all illusion. It's, it's internal gaslighting. It is literally trying to gaslight you out of your own experience. That is the oppression of feminine energy internally by masculine. Saying, nope, you made it all up. All of those emotions, either they weren't real or they never meant anything, or they were just fleeting, this, that, and whatever. You know, you can't trust. You can't trust. That's what it's saying, is you don't trust yourself. You can't trust yourself. But feminine knows what she knows. The soul knows what it knows. It never stops knowing. It never stops knowing. And there's the emperor again. And that actually is the gate, isn't it? I don't have the high priestess anymore, but I've never noticed this. I just was drawn to the red and the blue, which again is, is feminine and masculine. This being dark, this being lit, this being, I just felt it as a valley, right? But this is that gate, the gate full of eyes <laughs> from the high priestess. It, it's the gate to wisdom, to knowledge. It's like... <sighs> There's great determination there to witness how internally the out-of-balance masculine energy oppresses the feminine which is soul, which is feeling, which is knowing. There is absolute commitment and devotion. Absolute devotion. Again, it's it that's devotion is free. It's freely inspired. It's because this feels good to me, even when, even when things don't feel good. This feels good to me. Being devoted to this. It's so hard to explain. It, this never stops feeling good. <laughs> even when the fear is on top of things. I want this, most of all. I cannot be swayed from this. I have not ever been and I never will be. I will journey through hell. And that is essentially this journey. That is the journey of masculine energy. Is through the seven circles of hell. Which is perception of separation from soul and self, from feminine. All of the fear, all of the illusion. Facing it again and again and again and saying, I'll never stop facing it. You're not going to Again, beat me into submission. I'm not going to give up on facing fear just because of the threat of facing more fear. I will keep facing it for this. I will keep facing it to reach the feminine. Because that is what I want. That is my heart's desire. That is... My sacred quest, chosen by myself, by my wanting of it. Nothing will deter me from that. Keep telling me that I'm going to fail. Keep telling me I'm not going to make it. I will sit in it every single time. I will not give up on my desire. Eight of Pentacles. Again, I just dedicated 
It's the card of the worker. The path towards liberation. I will keep at this. I will not give this up. You're getting this Ten of Swords with the Knight of Cups. Everything that looks like a dead end. I flow around. I don't know why that's there, but that's there. When it seems that I have reached an impasse within myself. That's when I become very still. And I let the landscape shift. Seven of Pentacles, allowing, uh, it's, it is the power of perspective and perception, but it's also allowing. Finding a new way to look at something that scared me. I am drawn to the fact that this is a Black Widow, something I've also never noticed before. <laughs> Instead of reacting immediately, out of fear, I'm going to stand here and look at it. And in my looking at it, something new about it is revealed. I'm starting to see the pain that the fear connects to. And that that pain doesn't have to drive me. It's been driving me. I've been creating from that place of pain. I can choose not to do that anymore. I can choose to let that go. I can choose no longer to allow the influence of that pain and that fear over me. And that means instead of acting upon it, reacting to its uprising within me, I just sit with it. I just sit there and look at it and let it come through and let it be what it is. And I don't have to understand it. I don't have to analyze it. I just let it reveal itself to me. That's my only work. My only work is internal and it is done in the stillness of awareness and present witness. And there's, I was about to say, and I'm devoted to that. There's the chariot again, determination. So much, it's the third time I think the chariot's still under the, yeah, it's still under the lovers over here. Determination. I mean, it's a badger. Honey badger don't give a fuck, right? Badgers are stubborn. They are stubborn. And there's that heart in the background, too. The guiding light. That I'm not going to give this up. Roosters. I never noticed the rooster. There's so much I'm noticing on these cards that I've never noticed before. Yeah, it won't stop fighting. Will not stop fighting for this. Will not stop, no matter what. That means taking all of the pain. Feeling all of it. And we're going to do it. Because we want to. <laughs> Willingly. It's not a... Mm. There is a component. I'm trying to feel into that, that sort of like noble suffering. The martyrdom type of thing. But there's a realization that... 
there's a difference between pain and suffering. That we don't have to suffer in the feeling of the pain. The pain is there. The contrast happened and happens. And the wounds that have been generated are there. But the suffering is when we refuse to feel them. That's where the real discomfort comes in. And this, again, is what masculine has learned from feminine, is the power of feeling deeply, of allowing feeling, especially the darker ones, especially the uncomfortable sensations that are really mostly uncomfortable because we resist them. If we're not resisting them, there's not suffering in them. They can actually be pleasurable to us. Pain can actually be pleasurable. We can open ourselves to that experience, expand the spectrum of pleasurable sensation. There's a, there's a devotion to that, to expanding into, expanding the perception and the allowance of sensation to include pain and perhaps even fear as something that doesn't create suffering, that we don't have to fight against. The Hermit. Unwinding the soul, Six of Pentacles. We are, we're determined, I just keep getting this, committed to coming into balance within the self and the soul. To giving the soul the power to lead. Putting our focus and our attention there. Yeah, instead of walling off. Instead of curling up. Becoming defensive. We know, we know there are things that we have pushed away out of fear. That, that we wanted. That the mind loomed up large and said, no, 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 you don't want that. You don't want that. Scary, scary, scary. You don't want that. Scary, scary, scary. And we didn't have the consciousness, the presence. But this time we do. This time we do. And we're not, we're not letting go of this. Yeah, the fool. And it's, it's a new fool. I mean, we already have the world here. It's a new journey. We feel like we know nothing. We know nothing here. We know absolutely nothing. We have not a fucking clue what we're doing or where we're going. But we're going. We're going. <laughs> because we want nothing more than this. This journey. This experience. Knowing that this brings us to the feminine, brings us into closer and more continuous contact, into union. We don't know how. All of, all of the shit, all of the mind stuff that's saying how, why, when, where, all of that, we don't have any of those answers and we're learning to give up those questions. To just just realize they don't matter. None of that matters. None of that means diddly squat. Why? Because I want it. That's it. How? It just is. It happens. That's it. Ten of Pentacles. There it is. There's the dream made real. Because it's everything. Because this is everything. And I am not letting go. of this, which is everything that I want. This is my desire. I will not let go of this. It's read directly with strength, which is leading into the Ten of Cups. Strength is here because of the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is the pathway to the Ten of Pentacles.
This is a marriage of faith. That's what true marriage is. Faith. Trust. Even when we can't see, when we don't know. And I just realized, too, a lot of these cards have repeating images. Image, like the same images that are used and blended in different ways. These are the same eyes. From the portal to man's wisdom. Because that is, that's what this path is. And that is the greatest joy. Balanced energy. Unified masculine and feminine energy. Is the greatest source of joy. It feels the best. Balanced energy feels good to us. It doesn't get more balanced than unified masculine and feminine. And the masculine is committed to, devoted to that cause, that course. Again, freely, because there is nothing that is desired more than this. Anything else you want to say, Spirit? I mean... It's a big repeating message here. <laughs> Thank you. Masculine is the cooling element. The feminine is the heating. I have some more to say, but I don't know how to say it. It's the power of the feminine to whip the chariot into a frenzy. To get that speed that is desired and so delicious. It is the power of the masculine to... When the speed becomes just... When we stop trusting it and it, it becomes overwhelming to just let go... And allow it to, to carry on, to, to keep flowing, to coast with this momentum. It's, it's, I guess it's not quite a slowing down. It's just the, if it is a little bit of backing off, I don't know. It, backing off the intensity? No. See, there's... I put this because it's not that. Softening the focus. It's a different kind of softening. It's it it's a trusting. It is the feminine encouraged by masculine to whip the chariot and get it going and get it moving and light this fire and this passion. And then when it reaches a sort of fever pitch and it starts to tip, that's when the masculine kind of just relaxes. We stop whipping we stop driving the chariot and let it just go. And as it goes, it, it, it slows down a little bit because it's this, the waxing and the waning of the cycle. It's the ebb and the flow. We've had, we had the flow, we've reached this point, and now we're just, just 
allowing it to inhale a little bit so that we can then again push. I am not articulating that very well at all, but yeah, yeah. Seven of Swords, Seven of Pentacles. Look at the self-deception. Look at the way ego and the mind lies. The brain is full of bullshit. Truth doesn't live in the brain. Look at that. Look at that. Two of Wands. The moon and that five of wands again and just because I wanted to see yeah a little further underneath under that seven of pentacles the ace of cups and the ten of pentacles the brain lies and it covers up the emotion the emotion tells the truth the emotion is everything. The emotion tells the truth of everything. <laughs> Even when the flow appears to be stifled, it, it, it's not stopped. It's still flowing. In fact, the fear is a part of it. It's evidence of it. We wouldn't feel fear this strong if there weren't emotion equally strong on the other side of it. If there weren't feeling, we wouldn't be so afraid, feel so afraid, because afraid is not what we are, it's what we feel. If we didn't really fucking want this, if we didn't really care. If we didn't care, then, then we wouldn't care. What happened? Right? Take it or leave it. The fear is so strong because the passion is so strong, because the, intent, the, the intensity of desire is higher than it's ever been. And our intention is to release the internal conflict. To find a way to see, actually, that there is no conflict, right? <laughs> and that's what it means to line up with your desire. That's the power of perspective. To realize I'm, there's nothing actually out of alignment here. The fear is pointing to my desire. My desire flows. I can get back in touch with the flowing of it by looking at the fear. I can get back into the place of alignment with my own wanting, my own feeling, by allowing the fear to loom up large, to rise up within me, not pushing it away, not looking away from it, not running from it. Seeing it clearly, and in seeing it clearly, I receive the actual guidance from it, which is the clarity of my desire. <laughs> I was afraid that I had lost clarity of, around my desire, but the fear is actually giving it clarity. In all of the bullshit, all of the lies being spun by this lie generator up here are pointing me in the direction of truth by my awareness that this is the opposite. This is the opposite of truth. This is the opposite of reality. This is the opposite of who I am and how I feel. So I can feel this and from this place know the opposite. I can use doubt and fear to direct me back into faith and knowing. 
I can do that. I can do that. And all of it is just by standing there in it. That's how it's done, by standing in it. By not looking away from it, but by not, because it's trying to get me to look away from it. It's trying to direct me all of these other places. All I need to do is look it in the eye. Look the fear in the eye. Stand there and feel it completely. And not be budged by it. But let it redirect me. Shift my focus onto what it is that I actually want. It's tricky. It's sticky. I can feel this as, as one who is dominantly in masculine energy. This is my experience. It's why I have continuously related to and empathized with masculine. And sometimes been harsh on masculine because that is my own internal judgment of self. But we're devoted to this. There is nothing we want more than this. <laughs> So we will feel the fear as many times as necessary. We will feel the pain as many times as necessary because we're learning from feminine how to embrace the pain, how it's not so painful. We're inspired by that. Inspired by the freedom, the faith, the total liberation of the soul, of the self, its continuous vulnerability and openness to sensation, to feeling, to feeling everything and trusting that feeling. That's the desire. You cannot kill a desire. You cannot crush a dream. It is there because it is yours, because it is the truth of reality because it is so that's why you desire it because it is <laughs> and it's all just a journey of realizing the reality of it realizing oh this is oh this is what is this is what's real this is what's true <sighs> i want it so it is <laughs> i want it because it is That's the message. <laughs> this resonates powerfully with me. <sighs> Absolutely. I do intend that it resonates with you. I would love to know. If so, leave a comment, like, subscribe if you feel so inclined. But none of that matters. None of that matters. We're not letting fear stop us anymore. It'll tell us that we don't want what we want because that's how it manipulates <laughs> through fear, through confusion fomenting insurrection we just keep looking at it and seeing it's a bunch of bullshit it's not a thing to listen to it's not a thing we have to listen to we can just stand there and nod our heads and go, okay I'm not convinced that's how you feel. You're free to feel that way. I don't feel that way. I'm not convinced. I know what I know. Even with you standing in front of it, I know what I know. The sun is right there. It's right there. You're a great big cloud that just rolled in front and said, oh, there's no sun. There's never been a sun. It's so dark. Don't you know it's always been dark? No, I don't, actually. 
That's actually not what I know. I know the sun. <laughs> I know warmth. I know light. I know it's there. I know I don't have to freak out just because it doesn't appear to be right now. I know it hasn't gone anywhere. It's there. And I'll know it again and I'll know it even more clearly and more consistently. Because all this is doing is generating that desire, is adding to and clarifying that desire. And I know I desire it because it's true. I desire it because that's how it is. And what I desire is. It can't not be. That's the message. Have a beautiful day, morning, night, evening, whatever time it is in your space. And know that always and always, in every vector of time and space, you're not in this alone. You're doing awesome. You're exactly as and where you are intended to be. You are worthy. You are strong. You are capable. You are safe. And you are so deeply and perpetually loved. I love you.